Hello, Mallory Wesleyan Church. I'm Pastor Andrew, and I wanted to bring you um, a couple devotionals while I'm uh, stuck here in quarantine in my house. Um, I had planned on a couple additional sermons on the series we were doing on Ephesians, and uh, just some things that have been on my heart that I wanted to share, and um, I want to preach them or, or put them into a devotional today for you to think about and pray about. Um, and I'm hoping that it encourages you um, in the current world, you know, the way the world is today. Um, one of the things that I've, I've heard a couple pastors saying is that you can't believe some of the things you hear out there right now. Knowing what truth is, is very hard. Um, and, I, and I agree with that. And, and I think that when you go to the Bible, the Bible is truth. It's been truth 2,000 years ago, longer than 2,000 years ago, the Old Testament. And it is true today. It will be true a year from now, 10 years from now. My grandchildren, you know, uh, it's far, far in the future here, the Bible uh, presents truth to us. And I just want to talk a little bit about Ephesians today and talk about the... um, the truths that are in that book. But let me first uh, pray. Um, and I'll sing a song that we can join in singing together. And then we'll look at uh, God's word. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we ask you to come into this uh, place, this video space with us today. Encourage our hearts. Encourage our minds. And um, help us to be able to focus on your truths for this time. Lord, I ask you to help us um, and, and strengthen us, um, those who might be economically um, challenged right now, who are struggling to make ends meet, or um, not having enough income coming in, just help them, Lord. Those who are physically sick or, or ill um, and struggling at their homes or in the hospital, Lord, just, just have, a, have a touch of healing on them right now, Lord. And for our families, that I ask, ask, Lord, that you continue to strengthen our families, that we are able to bond closer together in, during this time. Lord, just help walk beside us at this point. Help us to know that you are there through all these things. And I ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Uh, so, I was thinking a simple song to sing, because my, uh, I don't think I have my guitar right here, so uh, a simple song we could sing would be Amazing Grace. So feel free to sing along with me. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now am found was blind but now i see through many dangers toils and snares i have already come twas grace hath brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home amen praise god so um as i had talked the last several weeks about the book of ephesians i'm just gonna sum up real quick uh you know Read the book of Ephesians. It's a great book. Um, it's Paul's letter to them after having done, a, um, t I think it was three, two or three year uh, missionary journey there. Um, he knew those people. 
he knew their past. Uh, you can read it in, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 19, regarding some of the, their old ways that they had done, because it's a mixed society. Uh, Ephesus itself is uh, on a on a point where there's a whole bunch of commerce coming in from the Mediterranean Sea, and it's uh, just an active port all the time. Um, one of the commentaries uh, equivalents uh, uh, it to uh, New York City, and as far as just like the busyness of the marketplace and coming and going and all that. They also had a huge library, and, and they wanted to show their knowledge in addition to knowledge of all the gods um, that they worshipped there. There's a god in every street corner, and uh, probably a brothel too. Um, and that's just the way that culture was at that time. And so when you start to have a person in Ephesus who's uh, been baptized by John, and someone like Paul comes along and says, no, no, there's Jesus. There's Jesus, who is the resurrection, who is the life, who uh, who who we we can um, follow that that uh, gives eternal life um, and for the forgiveness of sins. Um, Paul starts to develop that ministry, and over three years grows that, um, starting from twelve people to to who knows um, how many. And so now he's writing back to them in, in the book of Ephesus about. Um, how to stay strong, how to stay strong in the faith, um, and how to stay in unity with each other. That there's disagreements um, that happen within a, a church context uh, that, uh, you know, people need to be able to agree to disagree on at times um, in order for the unity of Christ to um, surface, in, in order for unity to abound. Um, I had said when I started the series that I, I wanted to look at all this stuff on Ephesus from a from a lens of what does this mean to us as the body of Christ or us as having unity in Christ. Um, and the, and that, that meant that for the entire book of Ephesus. Um, and the scripture we're going to read today is um, one of my favorite scriptures. It's from uh, Ephesus chapter 6. Or sorry, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verses 10 through 20. It's a very familiar scripture um, for people. Uh, and I'm sure you've heard it before in many different contexts. I know um, probably about, I don't know, five years ago now, I led a VBS on this. Uh, I, did, I did worship and we, we sang about all the different uh, parts of the armor, armor of God and, and all, all these different things that the kids could get into and swords and shields and everything. It was a great time uh, for a VBS. And uh, for me, um, this scripture is special because um, when I was first developing as a Christian, I had um, an Armor of God kind of poster, and it was one of my verses that I was really trying to memorize and to say, what does this mean to me um, as a Christian? And I would reflect on that sometimes in my um, early times as a Christian in devotion. So let's uh, read, read together today and um, look at some insights in this scripture. So Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have been done everything, stand, stand firm then, the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the belt of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And then verse 18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, the words may be given, so that I will 
fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I declare it fearlessly as I should. So the armor of God. I'm sure you've heard it before. I'm sure you've uh, sang songs or done uh, arts and crafts or something like that, writing these different pieces of the armor. So we have the, uh, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the boots or are fitted with readiness that comes with the gospel of peace, uh, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, and then sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is, of course, our our, um, our sword right here, right? That's no, our sword of the spirit, the word of God, which should be in here and come out from our come out from our tongue, um, but is it our sword as well? Uh, I actually had a cool conversation with somebody about sword drills the other day. I wonder the last time people did sword drills. Um, just trying to. Uh, remember where things are in the Bible and to come to those and challenge yourself to, to make ready where those words come from and, and having that word in your heart memorizing that uh, is a very powerful thing it's something we're called to do with this uh, sword, sword of the Spirit but um, what I wanted to do is um, talk about this text in a more general sense um, as I said looking at it through the lens of community and unity I have heard this text preached so many times regarding the individual that I must take up my own belt my own breastplate and and, and all these sort of things and I think that's that's correct um, but I think what's what's missing sometimes is when you look at this through Christian community and unity um, what did what did armies look like at that time? So I'm an action movie uh, fan. I, I like action movies. I like sci-fi movies, of course. Uh, but, um, you know, it's it's that lone knight that goes against the great dragon or uh, other thing. And, and they're, they're just, you know, they're standing there in their swords and shields and things like that. And it's, it's, it's you know, and there's biblical stories like this. There's David and Goliath. There's... Um, uh, Samson and, and the lion, you know, there's, there's things where there were one hero is pit against another and those sort of things. But, um, if we look at warriors getting ready for battle in this way, that they're, they're buckling up, they're putting their breastplate on things like that. The, the realistic, um, thing that Paul would have, um, knowledge of and reference of was the Roman army. Um, and they don't go fight one on one. They fight hundreds on hundreds. Um, and and that's that's the army that's the power of uh, us as Christians as our as our community it's all of us together focused on the same goal focused on the same task uh, in prayer or in, in in battle and to, to be unified in a cause for Christ in those ways um, the commentary uh, here says um, no doubt no doubt Paul, um, was allegedly influenced by Roman army, the strongest fighting force known in his day. Supposedly, the strength in this army depended on the individual soldier doing his own task. Each soldier was trained to protect a certain space around him. The understanding that in battle, an enemy entering into the space would lose his life. Their space was to be defended to the death, and with each man trained in this way, the soldiers were grouped in rows forming a square, kind of like a checkered board. Then at a command, the group began moving forward and en masse. And so you can imagine hundreds, thousands of these soldiers just marching and marching on forward. And that's the power of this scripture. Um... Another reference I've heard before is that the, the Roman army were great at uh, becoming what we call a turtle. Um, so it's, it's when the, all the shields come together and they kind of like just form this big ball of shield so that nothing could penetrate into that, into that area. They were just all 
that each man would, would, would hold hard and hold that shield so that nothing could come in. And all they would be protected from all the arrows. They'd be protected from all of the massiveness. Um, I've seen in movies where they had some spears coming out and things like that. You know, there's movies like 300 where the Spartans were fighting and they, they would do this type of uh, battlement as well. You could see those types of things. But when Paul starts to say, be strong in the Lord so that you can take your stand against the devil, devil's schemes, I imagine this strengthening of shield standing firm planting yourself so that you are holding tight and holding fast your sword of the spirit and protecting the stuff protecting yourself and in, in your ways in in that um in that army of god but not just alone together um and it says here because our struggle is not against flesh, it's not against people, it's not against, you know, all these um, uh, people out there doing silly things, uh, you know, I would say that kind of thing whether uh, 2020 happened or not, but basically there's people out there that do silly things, there's people out there that lie, uh, misdirect you, mislead you, manipulate, take um, advantage of uh, fear and, and all these different things. <sighs> And that has gone on throughout the ages. Um, and so what is truly or that we're fighting against? Against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So together, as Christians, we're standing firm on the truths of the word so that those spiritual forces in the heavenly realms can the, the dark forces cannot penetrate us that we will be strong and firm in our beliefs and strong and firm in our stance uh, for christ for god and i think it's no coincidence that there are what was it one two three four five uh, pieces of armor protection uh, against these evil forces and only one maybe offensive weapon though it's no coincidence that there's 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 more armor than there is weaponry because we're called as Christians to have you know a boot of readiness but also boots from the gospel of peace so it's about our peacefulness it's about our readiness to share that message of redemption share that gospel message with those around us that are fearful that are succumbing to these other forces to help them understand the truths of god stand firm stand firm not just as an individual in your own armor because you need to take it up daily right you need to put this armor of god daily you need to be able to um, pray have some sort of devotional or or lifestyle where you are continually in the word of god whether that's through one of our reading programs and looking at the website for the the different reading blocks that people are reading i, I know people at our church are reading it because uh every uh, three months they say hey where's the next reading schedule we really want it or where's the next da uh, daily bread we really want it and that's great fantastic i love that people say that stuff because it says people are reading the word of god they're digging into it it's a value of theirs to do so and and so to be able to take these things on each day and put these um different pieces and we could talk for hours about what you know these different pieces of armor mean but i'm sure you've heard many different <laughs> uh preaching about that the last part though um, on that verse 18 through the end says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this mind be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. And pray for me, that whenever I speak, the words given will be fearlessly made known the mystery of the gospel. So there are three kinds of prayers that he highlights here. Uh, of course, we always need to pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit and communing with that Holy Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. 
priority. And if it takes you five extra minutes to be able to quiet your mind or settle yourself down enough in order to have that quiet space to commune with the Holy Spirit, then that's what you need to do for you. You know, prayer is not, uh, Lord, help me with this thing. Okay, read this verse. Okay, go. You know, it's not going to be something like, God's not going to honor that time for you. It's about being in those moments and, 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 and communing with his spirit and quieting ourselves down in our busy lives enough to be able to uh, focus on that. But he said with all kinds of requests and prayers, which means, you know, uh, prayers, prayers for miracles, prayers for healing, uh, prayers, for, prayers for other people you know or things uh, uh, that are going on in people's lives. Um, you know, I've asked for people to pray for connection for people in our church or pray for the lost, for people to uh, seek out God and come to our church um, and to fi figure out, um, you know, what God God's going to be doing. Uh and I would, I would say pray for our leaders, right? Not only leaders of our church, but leaders of um, our nation and our country, right? Our country and our, our state. So as I leave you today, let's pray for all these things. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for your word and your truths today. Lord, help us to dive into your word and continue to read and learn more and more about your truths in this world. Help us, God. Guide us on our journey. We pray for the leaders that are above us. We pray for Mallory Wesleyan Church, um, that you would strengthen the leadership there. Lord, be with us no matter what situation is to come. Help us to stay faithful. Help us to learn from the Ephesians. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless and have a great day.